Dude, I'm telling you, I had four days off in a row this past weekend, which is kind of unheard of for me. And I played through um, a lot of games. I played through Tears of the Kingdom a little bit. Uh, Diop- well, that was last weekend, so I guess that doesn't really count. Uh, Burning Shores. Played through that almost that entire DLC in the span of two days. Um, so time to talk about that, because if y'all have been following the podcast for any length of time, uh, especially this past year, y'all know that I fucking love Horizon Forbidden West. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Top 10. Uh, it was one of the best. I don't know if I'd call it one of the best gaming experiences. I wouldn't put it in the realm of like Elden Ring or like Breath of the Wild, where it just has like a profound effect on my life or anything like that. But right. it was definitely a great experience and a great game. Had a lot of fun with it. So when the DLC got announced, Burning Shores, you're going to have this fire uh, lava biome. I was like, fuck yes, sign me the fuck up now. Let me play that shit. So does it live up to my expectations? Is it a is it good DLC to go buy right the fuck now? And should you be wasting 10 to 15 hours of your life going to do this shit, right? So I, I think it is a a pretty damn good DLC. I, I think it is worth playing for sure. I do have some issues with it. First off, we're, we're going to go through the issues first, and we'll talk about how much I love it. One of the first issues is the fact that they kind of marketed it as a fire, lava, flame biome, right? Where it is basically, that's going to be the entire area. And, I mean, there's lava there, but it almost doesn't really play a huge part into the actual gameplay. Uh, There are definitely lava sections, but it doesn't really affect your traversal of the area whatsoever. There's, they, they give you one cauldron, cauldron theta that you get included with the DLC and you have to like a little freeze canister drops and it explodes because of the heat of the, of the lava. But that's legitimately the only thing that happens because of that particular biome. Um, So it's kind of a letdown, honestly, but with that being said, it looks fucking amazing in the midst of the uh, the burning shores, the uh, the islands. I think in comparison to how this area looks in comparison to the rest of the game, this was a complete 180. Like, this is completely night and day in comparison to how the uh, base game looks. I absolutely loved going through this area, going through the different islands, the water, the... The, the torn down buildings and, and shit like that, right? That all looked amazing. So, eh, it's kind of like a give and take kind of thing. Yeah, the biome didn't really make much sense. It didn't really serve a purpose, ultimately, but it looked fucking good, though. So, I mean, it is what it is. That's all that matters. Um, next up, we have the actual story. No, the story is not an issue. The story is actually pretty damn good. The issue with the story is it's part of the DLC and not part of the base game. So I'm sure everybody has already heard about this. The Do you care about spoilers, sir? Nope. Spoiler alert uh, for Burning Shores. You can skip ahead uh, a minute or so, whatever, if you want. This is it has been made the news on uh, Aloy having a girlfriend. She's She's lesbian. Um, yeah, I heard all that already. So for me personally, I was I wasn't like hesitant or anything like that. It was kind of like okay, I, I I hope they just I hope that your story is just good. Okay, I hope the character development is there, and I hope they just they surface the characters in a way that it fucking makes sense. That's all I care right. about. Okay, that's all. And for the most part, they do a great job of kind of developing that relationship between her and Seika. Love that portion of the game, of the DLC, actually. Like, that was some of the best moments of the DLC and some of the most memorable moments in the entire game for me, for sure. Um, Because it it felt like you got attached to both of them. Whereas, I mean, if we're being honest, I mean, can I name multiple characters outside of Aloy? No. I mean, I I don't really care about them. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't care. I don't really care about them all that much. So they did a great job of making me care for Seika and Aloy's relationship uh, in this particular DLC. The issue with it is, and the issue that I have with it is the fact that it's in the DLC. So it feels kind of like a like a cop out. Like if you didn't play this portion of the game, if you only played the DLC, you never got this story. So when they tell future stories, it's going to be, oh hey. Where did this fucking person come? Why are they? Wait, why are they making out? <laughs> oh, I didn't play the DLC. Didn't fucking realize that shit. So I wish they would have put that in the base game and not the DLC. That that's my. It's it's a nitpick. I get it, but I, I think it would have serviced her character a lot more if they would have put it in the in the base game rather. Than I mean, the it would have been definitely been a better story building. You'd have had already had that background story for when that actually come to fruition exactly exactly as far as the missions i thought the missions were great i thought they were some of the best missions in the game uh the other issues that i have with the uh with the dlc they make you go find like figurines like as collectibles uh you have to do like aerial captures where you follow a track and you know the uh when you went to a certain spot and you used your little camera it took a picture of it it showed Mm -hmm. you like the past it's kind of similar to that, but you have to fly through this area. And while you do get to see the, the landscape and whatnot, you're not really paying attention to it because you're trying to keep track of where you're fucking flying because you fly, you fly too far away from it and you uh, you get torn off the mission. You have to start all over again. So it, it's more tedious than it is anything. Um, right. And I didn't I didn't really care for that aspect of it. I wish they would have put some relic ruins in there. We only got one that I'm aware of. Uh, so you got that one, and you got the figurines, which were they were okay. They were fine. I mean, they were they were kind of hidden and whatnot. Uh, and I wish they would have added some. They had one enemy base camp in the entire DLC. I just wish they would have put like like yeah, just one, just one. Wow. Put like three of them in there, man. Like I I get it. They're all two really big ones. Shout out. (laughs) Indeed. But yes, I I wish they would have just added a little bit more to that. And then there was only like two extra side quests on top of that. I get it. It's DLC. I'm not expecting I shouldn't expect a huge fucking game, right? But I I think there could have been a little bit more. A little bit more. Definitely. Maybe I'm just greedy. I don't know. That's just me. No, you're you're. It's 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 definitely it's it's merited. Like you definitely, if you're paying for a DLC, paying twenty dollars, and you get say five side missions and two story missions, and then five things to go find. That's not worth it. It's not. Worth no, it. I I don't. I, I wouldn't say that it's not worth it. I I by all means, I don't regret spending the money to buy. Oh it. no, and that's not you, what I'm you, getting at. It's more what I'm getting at is. You're not giving me my money's worth, I guess you would say. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying get, in general. I want to say it's six story missions, and then you get a seven, an epilogue with her in silence, which was nice. I mean, I don't know if they added them that that in after uh, after his death, but I, I did like that little aspect. And it was literally legitimately just a talking conversation, and you got experience right. points for it, but... Uh, I thought that was a nice little touch to the uh, to the DLC for sure. Trying to think of some other things. Um, they did have some pop-in issues, which I, I figured they would have had that fixed, but that was in the base game too. I mean, I don't know. It, there, there's a lot right. of pop-in. I, I don't really give a shit about that. It's just I, I wanted to point it out to everybody. Right. And uh, so, terrible. so does this elevate the base game for me? Does it make the entire game... Amazing. I, I look, I loved all of it. I enjoyed I got the platinum uh on the base game. I got all the trophies on the DLC. And uh I don't regret any of it, guys. That that was a fucking great experience. They did add a bunch of new skills and you got a new weapon called a Spectre Gauntlet, which is kind of like a like a it, imagine a stormtrooper shooting a machine gun kind of thing. Did you get the new bow? Uh, I got all the legendary weapons, sir. <laughs> Did you find good. the special bow? <laughs> what special bow? The one with that shoots like the little the um, suction cup things. Suction cups. 
their what was it suction cups? It was something. It was something childish. Like it did no damage. It didn't do anything. It was just it was there for cosmetically funny. Oh no, I must have missed that. Yeah, there's a hit. There's a hidden one that that that's what I was going to tell you, but I was going to let you see if you could find it because they announced it back when they announced Burning Shores that there was a bow that's like it's like a Nerf bow, basically mm-hmm. in a nutshell, and it's really just cosmetically funny. Oh no, I fucking missed you get that. it. If you get it from a certain character. I mean, get from a certain monster. Oh, yeah. Now I feel like I miss. Now I feel like I'm not incomplete, and I have to go back and try to find it. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, I, I absolutely love Burning Shores. I, I love the base game for Ben West. It is one of the best open world games I've ever played, um, and I highly recommend people go check it out for sure. Um, they added, uh, I think, two or three new machines. By the way, okay, real quick, the final fight against the Horus. You know the big f- motherfucker with the, the tentacles and shit like that? All right. Yep. The final fight, cinematic-wise, it is one of the best in-game missions I have ever played. It was better than anything in the base game. The cinematic feel of it. It felt like I was legitimately, like the world was ending kind of thing. Okay. Like it felt like a huge fucking moment. The way they presented it, you're running, trying to chase it. And dude, it felt so fucking cool. Like it was badass. Okay. With that being said, the boss fight, a lot of people are kind of complaining about it. You know, the camera, you know, it, it's, it's the, the monster, the, the horse is so fucking big and it takes up so much of the screen that it's really hard to navigate through all that. And that is 100% correct. It is it is very na- hard to navigate through that and find out where the weak spots are so you can take it down. Uh, that is my biggest issue. And it does kind of take away from the overall fight. But goddamn, dude, that cinematic feel. I, I recommend people, if you don't even want to play the game, the DLC, go watch that final mission. It is fucking awesome. Awesome. Yes, dude. Best mission of the DLC, best mission of the game, period. Book it. Write it down. I said. <laughs> Time stamped. 